Hey dudes, the release of the Canon R5 version 1.3 firmware has prompted a lot of questions from you guys about the camera's dynamic range with the addition of C-Log3. So let's get into it. What seems like a long time ago, a camera's headlining feature could have been the ability to shoot in a log profile. When the R5 shipped, the camera was able to record in C-Log, but it left many early adopters and potential buyers dissatisfied with Canon's omission of a better internal log format. I have no doubt, no doubt that Canon reps worldwide were inundated with requests to fix this issue in the camera. But after a long wait, Canon has finally added C-Log3 to all video recording formats in the R5. Now I've been a huge fan of the 8K RAW and C-Log in the R5 since its release. This combination has a lot of dynamic range which exceeds all my needs. And because of this, the R5 has been my A camera since I purchased it. So why am I so excited about the addition of C-Log3 in the Canon R5? It's pretty simple. Canon C-Log3 gives you an extra stop of dynamic range and more control over your shadows and highlights in a given scene. Even if you shoot RAW, C-Log3 provides more usable latitude which can be extracted when converted to C-Log2 in Resolve for even more grading flexibility. If you prefer using the 10-bit compressed codecs and smaller files like Full HD, the C-Log3 update provides you the same extra stop of dynamic range. The tricky thing is knowing how to expose C-Log3 without proper in-camera tools. And if you don't want to retrain your brain to interpret the log image, what do you do? How do you set a correct exposure? The best way is to use an 18% neutral gray card and an external monitor. Then use the external monitoring tools to set your exposure. If you don't have an external monitor with false colors, here's an easy solution. Go to camera tab seven, go to zebras and switch them on. Set one of your two available zebra zones to 40%. This should match your 18% gray chip chart, light meter reading and in-camera spot meter. When the gray card fills up with zebra lines, your exposure is spot on. Finally, if you don't like the in-camera desaturated washed out look, the R5 has view assist. But at the time of publishing this video, the view assist tool, it's not great. Whatever method you choose, understanding where the middle gray point is in C-Log is super important. And here's why. When we set C-Log and C-Log3 to the same ISO, we can witness the change in dynamic range either side of middle gray. Middle gray doesn't move on the exposure scale. Even though C-Log3 has an increased dynamic range of one stop, middle gray between the log curves is in a similar position. What changes is the remapping of the shadow and the highlight values, and this is viewable in the histogram. You can see the decrease in the waveform here when switching from C-Log to C-Log3. Now, if we leave our exposure where it is, this means that we have one additional stop of exposure in the highlights. And as we have set our middle gray point earlier, we know that C-Log3 is not underexposed when compared to C-Log because they have the same middle gray point. The benefit is we can increase exposure by opening the iris to gain more shadow detail retention. This would also give us the highly desired one stop over on our subject, which is preferred by most pro colorists when grading. Just remember to keep an eye on your lighting ratios to keep everything within your desired exposure spec. Another thing to consider is that each C-Log curve remaps the camera sensor differently. This is why C-Log3 has a tiny little bit more exposure in the shadows over C-Log on the R5. It's also the reason why C-Log3 appears flatter than C-Log, as there is a more aggressive desaturation curve applied to avoid color clipping. Now I can say that I'm very impressed with the initial test that I've done with C-Log3. It's super easy to grade and it provides a lot more flexibility in post. I've shot with the 10-bit codex in much lower resolutions, direct into the sun and have achieved some very, very pleasing results. So what was a very powerful camera has now become supercharged. The addition of C-Log3 to all video formats is a huge addition for the R5. 
The Log3 curve meets its fundamental purpose, keeping more exposure and colour information detail in the dark and bright areas of the frame, extending our camera's dynamic internal range, increasing our camera's usable latitude and provides us more grading flexibility in post. And this is why the addition of RAW plus the C-Log3 gamma curve in the R5 is such a big deal. The camera is now pretty much foolproof. As long as you get your middle grey exposure nailed down and don't clip the highlights or crush the blacks, you are going to be able to get a good looking image from the camera. On a final note, the main thing you don't want to do is underexpose the footage, as this can introduce vertical banding and unwanted noise. But this goes for any video camera and any recording format. The denser you can make your digital negative, the better you'll always end up in post. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.